know about you guys, but when the weather turns, I crave everything cinnamon and spice. So I love taking that classic spice combo and applying it to one of my favorite desserts, creme brulee. For this dessert, it's really quite simple, although it can feel intimidating. The secret to perfectly cook creme brulee at home is making sure you don't undercook or overcook your custard. I am gonna show you how to do that. Now for me, one of my favorite spice combos this time of year is ground cinnamon, ground ginger, ground nutmeg, and some kosher salt. To me, it just takes all those fall and winter flavors and pulls them together to something delicious. Now I wanna add all of these spices together so that it's a nice, even mix. Super, super fragrant. And that beautiful amber color. Now that my spice blend is ready to go, let's talk about another essential for creme brulee, vanilla bean. And this isn't a place that you wanna skimp when you're making it at home because it makes such a difference. To use the vanilla bean, I use the tip of a knife to open it right down the center. Once it's split, we expose all of those beautiful pods and I wanna scrape all of them out of the bean. These vanilla bean pods will now go into my heavy cream. There's a lot of flavor packed into those teeny tiny pods. Now that I've got the vanilla bean in there, I want to add that cinna spiced blend. Beautiful. Give it a quick stir. And now this is going to go to my stovetop and come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna pull it off the heat and let all of those flavors steep for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna add my cream with all that vanilla and those spices and let this come to a boil. Now that this has come to a boil, I'm gonna kill the heat, pull it off and cover it. And by covering it, this allows all of those flavors to steep throughout and really have high impact flavor. So I'll leave this for about 10 minutes and start working on my egg yolks. All right, while those flavors steep back with my cream, it's time to move on to our egg yolks to make this custard. The whites in one bowl, the yolks in another. I can save these whites for another use, but now I wanna mix my egg yolks with a half a cup of sugar. I'll mix until I achieve that pale yellow color. All right, my yolks and sugar are looking great. Beautiful ribbon stage. Let's bring up that spiced cream. Oh, it smells incredible. I've got all of those spices plus the vanilla bean in there. Lots and lots of flavor. Now, since this has been steeping for 10 minutes, it's had a chance to cool. So I'm gonna now add my yolks with the sugar right into this mixture. You'll wanna make sure this mixture is cool though so you don't have any curdling. I'm gonna get all of that mixture in there. And finally, I've gotta remove that vanilla bean that's in there. Oh, this looks so beautiful. It's like a hunt. There it is. All right, now it's time to get this flavorful custard in my ramekins. I don't wanna fill it all the way to the top, really just to about that ridge. I love how you can visibly see those spices and the vanilla bean. Now that my ramekins are full, we'll place in the pan. This is where we're gonna create our water bath to evenly cook our custards. You'll notice I don't like to skimp on creme brulee. This is a very generous serving size for one person. A good size to share as well. Now that my ramekins are set with my really delicious custard, it's time to get that hot water. Now I want my water to be around 200 degrees for that hot water bath. Perfect. Now you want to make sure that that water isn't quite boiling, but it's still hot enough. And as I add it here, I want it to go about halfway up the sides of the ramekins. Now be careful not to get any water spills inside the custard. 
Now my creme brulee is ready for the oven. 325 degrees for about 50 to 55 minutes, but what I'm really looking for is an internal temperature on that custard of 170 degrees. Time to check on these creme brulee. Now the internal temperature I'm looking for on my custard is 170 degrees. Perfect. They are perfect. Can't wait to take them out. Wow, these look incredible. I still just can't get over how you can visibly see the flavor in this creme brulee. We eat with our eyes first, and when I look at this baby, I see spices and vanilla beans, and I can't wait to dig in. But we can't forget the final step. We're gonna add one to two teaspoons of sugar on each of these custards. That's gonna give us that crispy candied topping. Now when those creme brulee come out of the oven and they're done with the water bath, let them cool for about 10 minutes or so, then transfer them to your refrigerator. You want them to cool completely in the refrigerator, so at least 30 minutes, but I tend to do it overnight. Now for the fun part, let's torch these babies. Now if you don't have a torch at home, you can achieve the same results with a broiler in the oven but I kinda like using the torch. And that's it. That's all it takes to make this exquisite creme brulee at home with all of those cinnamon and spices and don't forget the vanilla bean. It looks beautiful. I just like to garnish with a few berries on top. And clearly I can hardly wait to dig into this puppy. It's already in my hand for crying out loud. Now don't forget about that candy coating. Let's listen for the crack. Just how I like it.